Hey everybody, welcome to Verb Online. We're so glad that you're with us. Verb's a church for people who don't like church. My name is Tony. Hey, and I'm Margaret, and we would love to chat with you today. Why don't you put your name where you're watching from in the chat box, and let us know a little bit about what you're learning throughout today's message. Um, today, we are starting a brand new series called Hot Ones, and we're gonna be talking about some really hot topics that you won't wanna miss. Yeah, if you know anything about the show Hot Ones, it's on YouTube. You should check it out if you've never seen it. This host um, interviews a bunch of celebrities and he asks them a bunch of questions while they're eating insanely hot chicken wings. It's pretty funny. Yeah, and today we have a special guest who's gonna be speaking to us today. His name's Chad Goucher. He is a longtime friend of Verb and we kind of forced him to do our own little Verb Hot Ones interview. Check this out. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Vince Antonucci, the lead pastor of Verve Church. Welcome to Hot Ones, the hot show where we ask hot questions and have even hotter wings. I am joined by our guest today, Chad Goucher. Welcome to the show, Chad. Oh, man, thanks so much for having me, Vince. I'm stoked. Yeah, so Chad <laughs> uh, is one of my favorite people. You guys are going to love him today. Uh, Chad started a great church in Phoenix, Arizona that our own Peyton, uh, who is Chad's son, grew up in and has been a huge part of Verve, uh, supported us for years. We're so grateful to them. Chad, um, how are you about spice? I'm a little apprehensive. Yes, you should be, okay. <clears throat> so here's the deal, we're gonna start with slap your mama. I have met your mama, she is a sweet <laughs> old lady. No, no, no offense yeah. to her age, but she's a sweet lady. Yeah. But we're gonna wanna slap her in a second, you ready? Okay. Let's go. Tell me a little bit about your family. Uh, wife, Melissa, we've been married for almost 30 years. Way cool. Uh, three children, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, great kids. Getting ready to have another son-in-law. Uh, so it's fantastic. You have a great family. They're so family. fun. Yes. Love them. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to our uh, Los Caliente, which they get spicier each time. I'm sorry to tell you. That first one wasn't too bad. It's a little, little kick. Caliente. Oh, man. I like that one. You like it? Yeah. It's not, it's got some good flavor, but it's also a little spicy. <laughs> so we're into a lightning round. Let's go, ready? Uh -huh. what, what, Chad, what was your first car? 1954 Ford pickup. <laughs> 1954, that's awesome. Uh -huh. What is your favorite movie? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. What's your favorite nut? Uh, three quarters. No, no, five eighths. Okay, I gotcha. So here's a question we ask everybody. You ready for this one? What is your favorite Curse word. All right, uh, we're gonna move on. Uh, oh, don't smell it, just eat it. <laughs> okay, Chad. Oh. Chad, we got yeah. a hold of your phone. You got oh. some secret operatives. We were looking at your pictures and wanted, <laughs> why did you, oh. to the milk kind of helps. I wanted you to explain this picture to us. Oh, that's my awesome wife, Melissa. And uh, we are standing in front of Bucky's convenience store. <coughs> you ever been to Bucky's? It's in the southeast. It's like if Bass Pro Shop and Circle K had a child. So it's a convenience store sort of kind thing. Kind of, yeah. It's okay. pretty incredible. You yeah. guys look pretty excited to oh, be yeah. there. It's just that's a awesome. fun thing, yeah. Okay, so the, the last um, sauce is called Da Bomb. <laughs> It makes um, grown men, which I guess we are, cry. And so we're gonna we're gonna try this and then I'll ask your last question. Yeah, I do wanna punch my mom right now. <laughs> it was slap your mom. Oh, you, you're taking it to extremes. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Okay, ready? <coughs> oh. Chad. <coughs> Chad, I wanna talk to you. I <laughs> see. My voice has changed a little bit, Chad. I think I've, I think I've hit puberty. I don't know what's happening to me. Your, oh, your eyes, I feel really bad doing this to you. You didn't have to. Um, there, there are people who have celebrity crushes, you know, like, hey, I love my wife, I'm faithful to my wife, but but she's cute or he's cute. Um, I've <clears throat> heard about your celebrity crush through a, uh, through a source, not from you. Yeah. I want you to tell us who is your celebrity crush, Chad? Julie Andrews. Your celebrity crush is Mary Poppins? Why? She's like 80 years old probably, right? Not the first time I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
it hurts worse. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh. Why, why Mary Poppins? Have you seen her? I, I've never seen that show. I've seen her in something. Well, She's from Sound of Music, right? Yeah, same lady, yeah. yeah. Well, Chad, uh, you you, uh, you did it. Uh, four wings up, four wings down. I'm proud of you. Thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for doing this with us today. Yeah, look at look at the here. camera and uh, tell everybody bye bye. Verb, you guys are awesome. Bye. Hi, Verb. My name is Chad Goucher, and uh, you probably just got to see a little bit of a bad, bad day that I had uh, when we got to try some hot sauce, and I got interviewed by Vince. That stuff was miserable. But let me tell you, I love Verve, and I have loved Verve since day one. I pastor a church in Goodyear, Arizona, which is just on the west side of Phoenix, and we have partnered with Verve uh, since you guys began, and it has been one of the best ministry partners we've had. We love the Antonucci family, and um, we are just stoked uh, to do ministry alongside you guys. And so I am honored and thrilled to be here with you today and just share a little bit about uh, my personal story, but hopefully some, maybe a few little things that will help you in the midst of some trials in life. I, as I said, I live in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's often joked about that we don't have seasons in Phoenix. Well, we do have seasons. We actually have three seasons in Phoenix, Arizona. We have summer, we have right after summer, and then we have just before summer. So, so we have three seasons. And you know what? We have seasons in our lives. There are good seasons and there are bad seasons. And it's also been said that there are storms in life. that are kind of the rough parts. They're the, they're the they're difficult parts, the hard seasons of life. Well, it's been said that you are either in the midst of a difficult season, you're just coming out of a difficult season, or you're about to go in to a difficult season. And I really believe that's true in my life. And I believe that's true in your life as well. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says this. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus tells us, that this world is difficult, and we are going to have some hard seasons of life. But he says, take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus is saying, I'm bigger than any problem, any difficult circumstance, or any difficult situation that you might be in the midst of. Now, let's take a second and talk about these storms or these difficult situations in life. I believe that there are really two specific kinds of storms or difficult seasons in life. The first one is there are storms of correction. And sometimes we just do things that are stupid. Let's just not mince words about it. Let's just call a spade a spade. Sometimes we do dumb things and the consequences are bad and they lead us into places that we didn't want to go. Maybe we make a poor financial decision. We make a poor relational decision. Uh, we make decisions that affect our bodies in negative ways, and they lead us into difficult circumstances and difficult seasons in our life. I believe that those are kind of storms of correction that we go through. God uses those things to correct us and to get us back on path. But I also believe that there are storms of protection. And in those storms, we probably didn't prepare for those, and they may have not been our fault. They may be the results of someone else's actions, any number of things. But in the midst of these storms, these trials that we go through, these are times when we can kind of learn and develop, and God is using us and preparing us for something bigger and something better. Maybe you're having a financial problem, a relational problem, a health problem. None of these tough seasons of life, none of these tough storms of life mean that God's left us or forgot about us. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. 
in the spring of 2018, I got really sick. I had some pneumonia that kept flaring up and I couldn't, couldn't get rid of it. Finally, I was admitted into the hospital. Well, after some extensive tests, they come to find out that I have a lung disease. It's a form of pulmonary fibrosis. It's an autoimmune disease that has attacked my lungs. And so what they've discovered is that right now, my lungs function at 33% of capacity. So sometimes it may sound like I'm a little out of breath or like I've just run a marathon. Well, that's just because my lungs aren't working at full capacity. Well, in the midst of this, our life changed. Obviously, getting a diagnosis like that leads to some changes. Changes in diet, changes in what I can do physically, changes in what I could do work-wise the way I thought about things, the way I prioritize things. It has been a very, very difficult emotional, spiritual, and physical time. But I want to tell you about a story that happens in Matthew chapter 14. Because in Matthew chapter 14, we get this story that shows us that even in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our difficult times, Jesus never leaves us. And there are certain things that we can know for sure about Jesus during those hard seasons and those hard struggles in life. The first thing I want to encourage you with and challenge you with is that Jesus knows I'm here. He hasn't forgotten about me. Just because I got sick, he hasn't forgot about me. He didn't put me off to the side and say, oh no, I forgot about Chad. What am I going to do? And you know what? He hasn't forgotten about you in the midst of your storm either. Let me tell you this story that happens in the book of Matthew. And it's a very famous story. It's a story that maybe if you've ever been to church or maybe just a little bit, you've probably heard about. It's a story about this, this man named Peter who walks out on the water to meet Jesus. It's a weird story, but let me tell you, there's a lot of truth in it. In Matthew 14, beginning in verse 22, it says this, immediately, so Jesus had been preaching to a bunch of people and there was a large crowd. And as soon as the, this teaching was over, immediately after, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So I'm sure you've been to some sort of concert or music festival or something where there was a large group of people. Well, large groups of people always leave a mess. You can look at the fairgrounds after a concert or a stadium after a sporting event, and you see remnants of people being there. There's trash everywhere. Well, instead of asking the disciples to stick around and help clean up, Jesus sends them away and he says, I will take care of all this. I, I, I got this. I'll take care of the crowd. You guys go and rest. You guys, you guys go get on the boat and rest. Verse 23 says, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. After this teaching, he was physically exhausted, spiritually drained, emotionally tired, and Jesus went to spend some time with God. It says, later that night, he was there all alone. And the boat, where all the disciples were on, was already a considerable distance from the land. It was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So the disciples who Jesus had put in this boat were in the midst of a storm. Now there's a couple of things I want to remind you here. After this huge event, Jesus stays behind to clean up the mess and to deal with the aftermath. Jesus does that in our lives too. He wants to clean up the mess and deal with all the remnants of all the stuff the residual things that have happened from the storms and the big events of our life. He wants to deal with that. But you know what else he did? He put the disciples on a boat knowing that there was going to be a storm out there. And some of us might say, well, if he really loved the disciples, why would he put the disciples in a place where the storm was going to be? He knew the storm was coming, but he wanted to give them a little bit of time to rest and recoup before the storm. He was preparing this them. This was one of those storms of protection. And so in this moment, 
we can kind of realize from the disciples' standpoint, I'm sure that they were asking questions. Why in the world are we out here? What's going on? We're going to die out here. But God, Jesus, knew what was going on. It had already passed through his hands. He already knew what was going to happen. Our lives are the same. Even in the midst of a storm, sometimes we ask, why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? And God says, hey, this has already passed through my hands. Let's use this for something good. God knows exactly where you are. He knew the disciples were in the boat in the midst of the storm. He knows that they were scared. And he also knows that you are hurting. You're anxious. You're afraid. You're worried. You're doubting. He knows all of those things. And yet he still knows exactly where you are and is confident in that. And that leads me to the second thing I think we can learn here is that he doesn't leave us alone. He doesn't leave the disciples in the midst of the storm alone. And he wants to be with you in the midst of your difficult season as well. In Matthew 14, verse 25, the story continues and it says this, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Now, I don't know about you, but that's weird. I mean, those are just things that we don't see, we don't hear about, and we sure don't try to do. But here's Jesus walking out across the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Of course they were terrified. Wouldn't you be? And they said, it's a ghost. They said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately, there's that word again, he immediately, right in the midst of that moment, he says to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. He says, I'm with you here in the middle of the storm. He's not going to leave you. He hasn't abandoned you. Although we may feel like that sometimes, he's still there in the midst of that. But how in the world can Jesus say, take courage? In the midst of being tossed around in this boat, or we may be tossed around right now in a circumstance or a situation that we're dealing with, how in the world can we take courage in those moments? How can we not be afraid? Well, it comes from this confidence. It comes from a confidence in knowing who God is and what God's done for us and what he's willing to do for those of us who haven't chosen to follow him yet. If we'll just allow him, he is willing to take care of our needs and meet every one of them. You know, we all go through storms. We all have problems in life, relational, financial, health, career, parental issues, sibling issues, family issues, neighbor issues. We all have issues in life. But you know what? We all have one issue in common. It's an issue called sin. And sin are the things that we do that separates us from God. God's this pure and holy thing. And when we go our own way and we make our own choices that are outside of what he would have us do, that's called sin. Well, 2,000 years ago, on the cross, Jesus died for our sins. And in this moment, as he's walking out on the water, when he says, hey, take courage, I've got this. He knows that not long from that moment, he's going to die on that cross. And he's going to take care of the biggest issue that we all have. As I told you before, I've got some pretty serious health issues. They're not just something I can take lightly. It affects what I do every day. It affects how I do what I do every day. And it's something I have to think about all the time. But you know what? That's not my biggest issue. My biggest issue is that every day I sin. Every day I do things that separate me from God. But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, died on the cross to cover my sin and to forgive my sin. The biggest issue that any of us have to deal with isn't money, isn't relationships, isn't health. It's sin. And Jesus knew that. He says, hey, no matter what happens here on this boat, I got you. You're going to be okay. 
You may follow me on social media. And if you do, you'll notice that on my Instagram account, there's always a hashtag that says, Jesus handled my issues 2,000 years ago. And that's exactly what that means. No matter what trial, no matter what storm I'm going through right now, it is inconsequential to the things that Jesus did for me on that cross 2,000 years ago. So we know that Jesus doesn't leave us alone in the midst of our storms. But you know what we can also learn? We can also learn that he will help me grow. In the midst of those storms, he will teach me something every time if I just let him. He will teach me something that will help me learn to know him better, to see him better, to love his people better every time. Let me continue with the story. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, one of the disciples, his name is Peter, and he cries out, he says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And you know what? That's what Jesus always says. He just says, come, check it out. Come with me and just see what happens. Then Peter got down out of the boat. He walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. And then here's that word again. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Peter, he got out of the boat. He was excited to see Jesus. But then he was reminded of the storm, the physical storm that he was in. And my guess is there are some of us right now who want to follow Jesus. We want to go to Jesus, but we're reminded, oh, I, I, I've got financial problems. I've got a relational problem. I've got a health problem. And we take our eyes off Jesus, and we don't get to where we want to be. And you know what? The fact of the matter is, I would love to be like Peter and just say, Jesus, can I come to you and just climb out of the boat? And actually, I would like to be a little bit better than Peter. I would have liked to have said, hey, Jesus, can I come out there with you? As Jesus said, come, I just run and just cannonball off the side of the boat. That's what I would like to do. But the truth is, most of the time, that's not me. As much as I would like to, cannonball over the edge of the boat to be with Jesus, or sometimes even just like Peter did, just to climb down out of the boat. In all honesty, sometimes there are times when I have to crawl on my hands and knees to the edge of the boat, put my hands up on the side, throw my legs up over, and just kind of fall into the water. Sometimes that's the best I can do. And just say, okay, Jesus, you have to take this. We get weary in the midst of storms. We get tired. We get drained. We get wiped out. And I don't know where you are in your faith journey. Maybe you've been following Jesus for a long time, and you're on a spiritual high, and you just want to run and cannonball when Jesus says come. Or maybe you're like, okay, I can take a few steps, and I can climb out of the boat, and I can go to Jesus. But if you're limping along right now and you're in the midst of the storm, my encouragement to you is just to crawl to the edge, put your hands up on the side of the boat, throw your leg over the side, fall into the water, because Jesus is still saying, come. Let me take you out of the storm. Let me take you through the storm. And that's my encouragement to you today is sometimes... We've just got to get out of the boat no matter what. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, no matter what our feelings are in those moments. But here's the good part. As Jesus said three times in this passage, immediately he will meet us. And so maybe today you're choosing to do that. For the first time, you can have confidence that immediately Jesus is there. For you, for me, for all of us who choose to follow him. That's my prayer for you today. I pray that your storms would be few and they would be mild. But the harsh reality is they're probably going to be big and some of them are going to be pretty lengthy as well. 
But in the midst of those storms, just look at Jesus, just like Peter did. And he's saying to you, come. So just get out of the boat however you can and follow him in the midst of those things. Let me pray for us. God, thanks for what you do in our lives. Thanks for meeting us in the midst of a storm. And God, I know there are people that are watching right now, that are here right now, that are in the midst of a storm that they didn't prepare for, that they didn't know that was coming. And they're hurting, and they're bitter, they're angry, they're doubting, they're tired. And I pray that they would just hear your voice just like Peter did. Hey, come, come and follow me. Come, just step out of the boat and I'll take care of you in the midst of a storm. You don't always remove our storms, but you don't leave us in the storm. You give us a safe place in the storm. Because God, it's safer to be out of the boat with you than in the boat without you. And so God, that's what we want to do. We want to be with you. So just give us the courage to choose that over everything else. In Jesus' name, amen. Walking around these walls I thought by now they fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for a change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence, you never fail me yet. I know the night, I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, you're still enough, keep me within your love, my heart will sing
thanks so much for being here today, especially if you're new. Um, if you are new, we would love to get to know you. You can go to verb.cc, click on that I'm new button, fill out that form, let us know that you joined us today. And when you do that, we're gonna send you some information about how you can get connected and grow in your faith. And you may get a bag of Pop Rocks in the mail. Can't beat that, right? some Pop Rocks in the mail. Hey, if you're not new and you've ever wanted to give to our church, at verb.cc, you can also give. Just hit the giving emblem. It'll walk you through some different ways that you can give. If you've been looking for a way to maybe take a next step in making Verve Online your church, great way to do it. Just go to verve.cc. That's right. And we've got some cool stuff going on. Um, so if you have a middle school or a high school student, um, camp is coming up in June and we've got some spots available. So if you're interested in that, um, you can email our next gen pastor, Peyton. He'll give you all the information. Even if you're not in Vegas, we would love for your high school or middle school student to join us. So check that out. Um, also, if you're looking for ways to dig deeper in your faith, we have a four week online group coming up. It's called Discover. It's gonna start in July and we would love for you to be a part of that as well. You can go to verb.cc, click on that groups button and sign up for that today. Great way to take some next steps this summer. Hey, we end each one of our services. If you've been around, you've heard us say Viva La Verve. Verve is a real word. It just means enthusiastic life. And we simply are saying Viva La Verve because we want to live that kind of life. We want to apply the things that we're learning, you know, when we show up here at, at Verve Online. So next week, we continue with our Hot Ones series. We're going we're gonna to do some damage to someone else. You'll we'll get to see one of those <laughs> interviews again. But until then, and as always... Viva Laverne. See you guys.